This module will describe and analyze the policies of decentralization and balanced development as the effects of those policies are still resounding in the establishment of the Sejong Special Self-Governing City, relocation of 154 public enterprises to 10 newly created innovation cities, transformation of the Jeju Province into the Jeju Special Self-Governing Province, reform system of central government transfers, etc. 25,274,000 of the total population of 51,069,000 are residing in the Seoul metropolitan area in Korea. Besides, Korea has a very long history of centralized state. The Joseon dynasty, founded in 1392 and lasting until 1910, was already quite a centralized state, where the governors and local government chiefs were appointed by the central government. Up until 1991 and 1995, when local assemblymen and local government heads were respectively elected by general popular votes, local authorities had been organized by the central government in a top-down manner. The only exception was the period of one year when the central government was established after the April Revolution in 1960, which was disbanded by the May 16th coup in 1961. Even though local autonomy was adopted with popular elections of local assemblymen, governors, and mayors, the intergovernmental system of Korea remained mostly centralized. So to speak, the local government was very limited in its power to organize its government, create administrative services, enact local codes, and levy local taxes. The Korean government had adopted the policy of imbalanced economic development, focusing on the southeastern part of Korea as its locus of industrial investment. The construction of the first expressway to connect the port city of Busan with Seoul in 1968 symbolized such an imbalanced and focused economic development strategy. Such an economic strategy of imbalanced and focused industrial development left southwestern and eastern parts of Korea economically rather alienated. The most severe economic imbalance took place between the Seoul Metropolitan Area, or SMA, and the rest. As a result, the portion of the population of the Seoul metropolitan area increased even recently from 46.3 in 2000 to 49.5% in 2015. It was the No administration inaugurated in 2003 that put forth the most significant efforts on both local decentralization and balanced development in Korea. Specifically, it enacted the Special Law for Decentralization in 2003 and established the Presidential Committee on Government Innovation and Decentralization as a main vehicle to push its five-year roadmap for decentralization. As to balanced development, the No administration enacted the Special Law for the Nation's Balanced Development in 2003 and established the Presidential Committee on Balanced National Development. It even tried to move the capital from Seoul to the Chungcheong area, which eventually led to the establishment of the Sejong Special Self-Governing City. The Sejong City currently harbors 16 central government ministries and 20 government subsidiary organizations. As the regional development in Korea was an arena of the central government from the beginning, it seems quite natural that it was mostly governed by the national laws rather than local and regional codes. It was in 1963 that the central government established the Law on Comprehensive Planning for National Territory Development as the mother law for land planning and development. In 1972, it also enacted the National Territory Utilization and Management Act to enforce planned land uses in the non-urban areas of the nation. Each 10-year comprehensive plan for national land development has its own emphases in regional development and reflects the economic development issues at its time. 
the first comprehensive national territorial development plan, adopted a development strategy of select and concentrate economic development strategy, focusing on the southeastern region of Korea and the Seoul-Busan corridor of spatial geography. As the initiatives to suppress the population growth of the Seoul metropolitan area had turned out not successful, the Korean central government enacted a law to directly regulate its population growth in 1982, which is named the Seoul Metropolitan Readjustment Planning Act. To be specific, the act adopts the population impact analysis and stringently regulates economic activities to induce population influx into the Seoul metropolitan area that is comprised of the cities of Seoul, Incheon, and Gyeonggi province. The third comprehensive national territorial development plan from 1992 to 1999 brought some deregulatory changes in the Seoul Metropolitan Readjustment Plan. The Seoul Metropolitan Readjustment Plan moved further toward deregulation under the conservative governments of President Lee Myung-bak and President Park Geun-hye with the pressures of global competitiveness. However, there exist competing perspectives on whether and to what extent the Seoul metropolitan area should be regulated. It is often the case that conservative governments tried to deregulate the land use of the Seoul metropolitan area, while the progressive governments tend to take the path to strengthen its regulation or shy away from further deregulation. There are two competing perspectives concerning the land use regulation of the Seoul metropolitan area, which are the competitive growth model and generative growth model. The competitive growth model regards that the growth potential of a country is fixed so that a growth of one region would be made at the cost of the growth of the other region. Meanwhile, the generative growth model maintains that each region has its own growth potential, so that the growth of a region does not necessarily affect the growth of the other regions. According to the generative growth model, the land use regulation over the Seoul metropolitan area would not result in the positive economic growth of non-Seoul metropolitan regions, as each region would have its own growth potential that is fixed at a given time. The Seoul Metropolitan Readjustment Plan was frequently confronted by the outcries for deregulation in the 1990s, as the global completion became more strongly felt. These outcries were often fiercely made by the governor and mayors in the Seoul Metropolitan Regions, as they started to get elected by the popular votes from 1995. These attempts to deregulate the land use of the Seoul metropolitan area were frequently resisted by political coalitions being comprised of local and provincial government heads, environmental NGOs, local autonomy NGOs, etc. For example, when the central government was pushing to increase the quota of the factories that could be built in the Seoul metropolitan area in 2001, it had to face an aggressive resistance by a grand political coalition consisting of non-Seoul metropolitan, provincial, and local governments, local and regional chambers of commerce, and NGOs for balanced development. The table summarizes a timeline of the central government policy toward the Seoul metropolitan area until the No administration, on the one hand, its policy might as well be described as a pendulum between the competitive growth and generative growth models of regional development. On the other, however, it reflects rather fierce debates and political competitions between Seoul metropolitan and non-Seoul metropolitan local and regional governments, as well as political activist groups such as NGOs, interest groups, and experts with differing perspectives. The domestic policy of the No administration may be best represented by the Special Law for Decentralization and the Special Law for National Balanced Development, enacted in December 2003. The Presidential Committee on Government Innovation and Decentralization and the Presidential Committee on Balanced National Development established to implement these laws practically comprised two main pillars that led the domestic policy agendas of the NO administration. 
Being placed at the top of the policy priority, the ideas of the decentralization and balanced development seems to have a commonality. That is, the transfer of authorities and resources from the central government and the Seoul metropolitan area to the local and regional governments and non-Seoul metropolitan area. Examining it more closely, however, these two seemingly compatible policy initiatives can have a contradiction. There are quite a few authorities that can be transferred from the central to local government, which include the broader powers to enact local codes, shape its government structure, recruit its personnel, and levy taxes. The No administration also tried to create the regional police system. However, its attempt for decentralization fell short of achieving its original intent. The balanced development policy of the No administration was quite comprehensive and ambitious in its nature. It is comprehensive in that it includes initiatives to not only promote regional, industrial, and economic basics, but deal with the issue of managing the Seoul metropolitan area. Of peculiar in the balanced development program package is the massive relocation of public organizations from the Seoul metropolitan area to non-Seoul metropolitan areas. The jury is still out to judge how the results and impacts of the policies toward balanced development and decentralization are. Even though these policies have been pursued by almost all administrations, it was the no administration that put the highest priority on those policies and tried to implement them in a substantive way. Thus, the balanced development and decentralization policies taken by the no administration could better be proper foci of analysis to extract policy implications drawing upon Korean experiences. The policies of local decentralization and balanced development were embraced by the no administration with enthusiasm. This enthusiasm, however, had to face the reality of the contradiction soon after. Thus, some kind of prioritization had to be made between the programs of local decentralization and balanced development. It could be plausibly maintained that the balanced development policy has produced more results than the decentralization policy. The No administration tried to put similar levels of high priorities on both balanced development and decentralization policy. For example, it enacted special laws, special law for balanced development and the special law for decentralization, and established powerful presidential commissions. The Presidential Commission on Balanced Development and the Presidential Commission on Government Innovation and Decentralization to carry out both policies. Being intended or unintended, however, more initiatives on the side of balanced development had successful follow-throughs toward the end of the tenure of the No administration. The results and effects of regional innovation initiatives, which were undertaken as a part of the balanced development program package, are still in need of being figured out. The results of its initiatives for decentralization from the Seoul metropolitan area have been immediate and rather immense in its magnitude. The Presidential Commission on Balanced Development, established by the No administration, had decided to relocate 175 out of 345 public organizations in the Seoul metropolitan area in 2005. Ten innovation cities have been newly established to host 115 public organizations. In addition, 20 public organizations have been relocated from the Seoul metropolitan area to the newly established Sejong Autonomous City. In comparison with the balanced development policy, the results and impacts of decentralization policy seem quite moderate. A desirable scenario would be that decentralization would empower provincial and local governments so that they could devise their own and appropriate regional development initiatives and improve their regional economic conditions for themselves. As discussed, however, decentralization could contradict with balanced development because local government with larger tax bases and better infrastructure could do more in terms of 
regional development with delegated authorities and vice versa. Thus, the more effective the decentralization policy is, the severer the imbalance between regions and localities could become. Such contradictory relationship between decentralization and balanced development might hinder the raw administration from pursuing its decentralization policy more aggressively. Especially, the transfer of tax levying powers was almost not carried out, while the overall rate of revenue sharing between the central and local government became larger.